Howdy, everyone, and welcome into the Best Bell Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Bradley Stalder, and this is episode 24. In episode 23, though, I looked at ADP changes in best ball, in particular on the drafters.com website, where I identified the biggest risers and biggest fallers from May to June. If you want to check out episode 23, go to the YouTube channel or listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Tonight, I'm going to my June best ball quarterback rankings. These are updated on Fantasy Pro, so you can check those out. I'll have links posted in the YouTube channel and also in the podcast description. So I'll ask that you check those out and they'll be regularly updated. So if you want to check it out in July or August and these have not, this podcast hasn't been updated. You can also check out the fantasy pros rankings I have on there. So we'll start with the consensus one one and Josh Allen is the consensus one one on pretty much every quarterback board, but where he is going on underdog is almost 30th overall in mid third round he's actually going later in the full ppr which makes sense that in the full ppr josh allen is not as valuable because you'll see a lot more players be able to access more points in four point passing touchdown leagues josh allen's still going to get his rushing scores but wide receivers can score a lot more ppr fantasy points and running backs who catch passes they can as well so josh allen at an adp of 32.6 on drafters and adp of 29.7 that seems to make sense at number two this is where we start seeing some differentiation i have justin herbert at quarterback two He's going as the quarterback three on underdog, and he's going as the quarterback two, but one spot in ADP ahead of Patrick Mahomes on drafters.com. So I think that this is your tier. It's clearly Josh Allen as your tier one quarterback, Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert as your two and three. And that's where I have Mahomes. I have him at three. I don't get spicy in the beginning. So Allen... Herbert and Mahomes, but it's clearly Allen. The difference in ADP between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes is about 12, 13 spots, a full round on underdog. And on drafters, Josh Allen to Justin Herbert, the number two quarterback in ADP, is 15 spots. So once again, quarterback is bumped down in full PPR tournament plays like drafters. Whereas in half point, where relatively speaking, quarterbacks will be scoring more points, you want you know, to be drafting your quarterbacks a little bit earlier. So as I mentioned, Patrick Mahomes is my third quarterback. And fourth, and this is consensus across the board as well, Lamar Jackson. Now, the Baltimore Ravens last year were sixth in the NFL in pass attempts. And that was because their running backs, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, were both injured in the preseason ACL tears and they had to change game plans. They didn't have the running back core to be able to make up for what they wanted to run on offense. Unfortunately, the likes of Devonta Freeman were not going to make it happen. He just doesn't bring the same talent level to the offense as Lamar Jackson does or as a J.K. Dobbins or a Gus Edwards. So Lamar Jackson, we could see him regress, but at the same time, they're going to be relying on him because we don't, we haven't heard progress about Gus Edwards. J.K. Dobbins isn't running yet. The Ravens have brought in Mike Davis and Tyler Beatty, who may be camp bodies. And the Baltimore Ravens also traded away Hollywood Brown. So the offense is going to run primarily through Lamar Jackson, and it very well may be the case that Lamar is the quarterback one this year, given the amount of rushing that he's going to have to do to maintain the Baltimore offense. So I have him at four right now. I haven't done the projections yet, but I, I am anticipating that Lamar Jackson is going to be up there for a quarterback in top four i wouldn't be surprised if after projections he's becomes a top three or even top two quarterback 
Number five, and this is, um, again, consensus across the board, Kyler Murray is five for me, but also quarterback five on underdog and quarterback five on drafters. We've seen Kyler Murray have these blow-up games. Looking at his his upside in 2019, his 84th percentile outcome was like 27 points. In 2020, it was like 35 points. And in 2021, it was about 30 points. So we've seen Kyler Murray take a step back, and I think it was because of the shoulder injury and also the loss of DeAndre Hopkins during the season. Insert Marquise Brown into that Arizona offense. We're going to see Kyler Murray, a healthy Kyler Murray, step up. And I, he also has within his range of outcomes being the quarterback one overall due to the rushing capabilities. But also, he's got Hollywood Brown. He's got DeAndre Hopkins in the back half of the season. Rondell Moore is a useful piece in the offense. Zach Ertz is going to be reliable. James Conner is a good pass catcher. Daryl Williams is a good pass catcher. All of this aligns for a really solid situation for Kyler Murray. He should be safely in your top five. The top six, and you can blame me for getting this player into the top six ahead of Joe Burrow in all formats, in all in drafters and an underdog, Jalen Hurts. Okay. Jalen Hurts is my quarterback six behind Kyler Murray due to the rushing upside. But looking at what has gone on with Jalen Hurts, he was able to improve from 2020 to 2021 in his 84th percentile outcome. Now, in 2020, remember, it was Jalen Hurts' rookie year, and also he didn't play full-time. The Philadelphia Eagles had him sprinkled in here, but he took over full-time as the starter, and in his first season as a starter for the Philadelphia Eagles, his PPR fantasy points, 84th percentile outcome was 29 points. That's pretty comparable to Kyler Murray. That's pretty comparable to Lamar Jackson in 2020. That's comparable to, let's see here, Russell Wilson right last year. So he's definitely a quarterback that needs to be considered in the top six and those stats as i said the 29 or so 84th percentile outcome for jalen hurts is now going to be improved with the addition of aj brown taking snaps instead of the likes of jalen rager or jj arthago white side so i like jalen hurts there he's also a sleeper quarterback one overall candidate i believe The quarterback seven on both underdog fantasy and drafters right now is Joe Burrow. But I don't have Joe Burrow at number seven. Instead, I have Tom Brady. Tom Brady is my seventh quarterback. And as long as he is on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as long as he has Mike Evans and Russell Gage, and I believe Rob Gronkowski will be returning Tom Brady, over the last two seasons on Tampa Bay, his 84th percentile outcome has been 31 fantasy points, about 31 fantasy points. That is pretty significant. We're talking, comparing that to Russell Wilson, who couldn't get there last year. It's higher than Joe Burrow. It was higher than Jalen Hurts last year, right? It was higher than Kyler Murray last year. So Tom Brady, I know he's without Chris Godwin and without Antonio Brown, but I still think that he's going to have a high pass volume. They're going to be a fast paced team. They're going to be a team in positive game scripts. So you can anticipate that Tom Brady is going to still replicate fancy goodness at seven. At eight for me is Russell Wilson. And he is also the quarterback eight on underdog, but he's the quarterback nine on drafters and I like Russell Wilson at this spot because I'm bullish on getting pieces of this Denver offense to stack with so especially in these week 17 format games where you want either pieces of the Kansas City offense or you want pieces of the Denver offense in that matchup week 17 Russell Wilson hooking up with Cortland Sutton and even with an overpriced Jerry Judy, Albert O.K. Wugbanam could match up. K.J. Hamler is really cheap. Tim Patrick is really cheap. 
and being able to target Russell Wilson when pieces of his offense are relatively underpriced, like Cortland Sutton. I've seen him creep ahead of Jerry Judy, but both of them are going in the fourth or fifth rounds right now. And to get the top pass catchers for Russell Wilson in the fourth and fifth rounds, that's a deal. So I like Russell Wilson at eight. He is on, as I said, eight on underdog, but nine on drafters. Another quarterback that I really like and I've been getting a lot of is Dak Prescott has not been getting a lot of love in the fantasy community. Instead, he is the quarterback 10 on underdog and he is the quarterback 10 as well on drafters fantasy, but he is my eighth quarterback because I have him or his, my, he's my ninth quarterback. He's ahead of Joe Burrow for me. So there was a little bit of switching that occurred. And I believe the Dak Prescott, his upside is, has been only paralleled by Patrick Mahomes over the last three seasons. He and Mahomes are the only two quarterbacks each of the last three seasons to have 25 fantasy points as their 73rd percentile outcome 25 or more fantasy points as their 73rd percentile outcome so you want Dak Prescott especially given the resiliency he's shown he's came back last year from a devastating knee injury and put up the points that he did on a team where we saw Michael Gallup leave with injury we saw CD Lamb deal with injury Omari Cooper was on the COVID list and dealt with injury Dalton Schultz was the only not injured player on the team Ezekiel Elliott had a sprained MCL all of these things support Dak Prescott now he's got a healthy CD Lamb Dalton Schultz is still there they brought in Jalen Tolbert and James Washington the offense is going to funnel through Dak Prescott passing to maybe it's Tony Pollard but Dak always finds a way life finds a way and if he's not running he's passing and he can keep up. The, the the Dallas Cowboys run a pretty fast-paced offense, and they're going to get into some shootouts. They're not afraid to throw the ball. So Dak Prescott there, and I like the reports as well coming out of camp that the Cowboys want Dak Prescott and are scheming Dak Prescott to run a little bit more. As I mentioned, Joe Burrow is my 10th quarterback He's quarterback seven on both underdog and drafters. And I feel like I need to explain myself because Joe Burrow, I love Joe Burrow. The person I'd love to go and smoke cigars with Joe Burrow. That would be, that's like a bucket list thing for me is to smoke cigars with Joe Burrow. Just sit on the couch, dude it out. But when it comes to best ball in particular, Over the last two seasons, Joe Burrow's 84th percentile weekly outcomes have been 25 and 26 fantasy points. That's not going to get it done. It is significantly lower than anyone else in this tier. Comparing, as I mentioned before, Kyler Murray always hovered between 27 and 33. Jalen Hurts was 29 last year. As I said, Joe Burrow was 24, 25 fantasy points. Russell Wilson, over the last three seasons, has been 28 to 31 fantasy points. Tom Brady, over the last two seasons, 31. Dak Prescott, Trey Lance, Trey Lance, we'll talk about him, and Justin Fields later. But Matthew Stafford, I have Joe Burrow ahead of Matthew Stafford, given the youth of his pass catchers. The Rams pass catchers, pass catching core Cooper cups, 28, 29 years old. You've got Odo Beckham who might be coming back. Allen Robinson will turn 29 during the year. Van Jefferson is not going to be a significant piece. And so the age of those wide receivers could lead to more injuries throughout the season. Whereas Jamar chase and T Higgins, those are younger players and T Higgins. He is recovering from a shoulder issue, but should be good to go. It's about viewing Joe Burrow and his upside. And over the last two seasons, he's had some really high spike weeks, but also his floor is dangerously low. I know he's coming off the ACL tear, but that's the difference between Joe Burrow and Dak Prescott was able to more consistently increase his passing volume 
whereas the Bengals are willing to hand it off to Joe Mixon if they're in the lead. So the Cincinnati Bengals, I am a little lower on Joe Burrow in um, in these best ball tournaments because of the historical upside that he's shown, the lack thereof compared to the players that are being drafted around him. Now, in season-long leagues, love stacking Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins or T. Higgins. He's going to be pretty consistent about getting you 20-something fantasy points. But getting those elite ceilings, it's difficult. It's been difficult for Joe Burrow to come by. Matthew Stafford, as I mentioned, is my 11th quarterback. He's going as quarterback 12 on underdog and... Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, he's going as quarterback 11 on drafter. So I feel like he's appropriately priced. But as I mentioned, I do have Joe Burrow ahead of Matthew Stafford. Stafford coming off the shoulder injury, I think, or throwing arm injury. He hasn't thrown much this offseason, but he should be good to go. Um, and when it's come to the spike weeks, like he's been in 2019, when he was on the Lions and in 2020 when he was on the Lions, he ranged from about 24 to 29 fantasy points. And then last year, his 84th percentile outcome was about 28 fantasy points for the LA Rams. So Stafford, I think he's appropriately priced there. I, I'm comfortable having him in my top 12. But given that he's not mobile, he could put up a top five numbers in passing this year, but he won't get you access to the quarterback one overall weeks. That's the issue with Matthew Stafford due to his pocket passing tendencies. Number 12 for me is Aaron Rodgers. And Rodgers is quarterback 13 on underdog. And let's see. What did I say? Stafford was 11-12. 13. So Aaron Rodgers is 14 on drafters. I have Rodgers at 12, partly because I'm the Green Bay Packers homer. You have to know that about me. But also because over the last three seasons, Aaron Rodgers has had pretty consistently 26 to 29 fantasy points as his 84th percentile outcome. He's got a decent offensive line. They've got a really good uh, defense, but the Packers were last in pace of play last season, and that's concerning that they're going to be running the ball and passing and dumping off to the likes of A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. That's who the offense is going to run through, and maybe they'll take a couple deep shots with Lazard or Romeo Dubes, or maybe there's another player, Christian Watson will step up, but I'm not confident that Aaron Rodgers will have as much of the spike weeks compared to the Staffords of the world or the Joe Burrows of the world. So I, I think ranking Aaron Rodgers below Joe Burrow, even though Rodgers last couple seasons have been significantly higher when it comes to spike weeks, I think that the change in the offense does shift it down for me, but not all the way down to, to quarterback 14 on drafters. He's quarterback 13 on underdog. Trey Lance is my quarterback 13 and he's quarterback 11 on underdog and he's quarterback 12 on drafters. <clears throat> so I think he's appropriately priced. He's around that same spot. I have him at 13 underdog 11 Trey Lance 12 on drafters. <laughs> as long as Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the roster, there's a, what a 5% chance that Jimmy G will play. It's not zero. It's just not zero. But we also struggled to see some of the ceiling last season for Trey Lance. Like we saw a floor, certainly. And that was interesting because we saw a couple 19, 20 point games when he was the starter. But we didn't see like one of those games be a big blow up game. That would have been really nice if I was a Trey Lance truther to see a one, even one big blow up game. Instead, his data distribution looks more similar to Justin Fields than you would have thought. His 84th percentile weekly finish last year. So we're talking like top 16 percentile finish. It was only about 20 points. 20 points was that 84th percentile. So it was some upside here. 
it just wasn't shown. I wish he would have shown more. That's why I'm a little lower than 11 and 12 for Trey Lance. I dunk, knocked him down a little bit. Keen Kirk Cousins. Now, I love Kirk Cousins. Uh, he's going as quarterback 15 in Minnesota, an underdog. And he's going uh, 15 as well on drafters. I'm bullish on the Minnesota offense this season. I think they're going to be a faster pace play team. I would not be surprised if Kirk Cousins becomes more similar to what we saw from Matthew Stafford last year and Justin Jefferson becomes like the Cooper Cup. Adam Thielen also steps into that Robert Woods role or what we saw be really successful late in the season, the Odo Beckham role, and that would mean fantasy goodness. And getting, I want to be getting Kirk Cousins on my fantasy teams. I feel like it's a significant teardrop down from Kirk Cousins to the other quarterbacks who are being drafted before him. The likes of Justin Fields, in some cases, is being drafted ahead of Kirk Cousins. Derek Carr, in particular, I would take Kirk Cousins over Derek Carr. And that is the case on underdog, and it's the case on drafters, where Derek Carr is going ahead of Kirk Cousins. Now, here's where I start to get a little spicier. And I've looked at the upside from the last couple seasons from this player, and it looks eerily similar to Matthew Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. And that is the quarterback who's being, whose ADP on underdog is 19 and whose ADP 21, quarterback 21 on drafters. But I have him at quarterback 15 in these best ball tournaments, and that is Jameis Winston. <laughs> Jameis Winston's 84th percentile outcome over the last three seasons, when he was the starter in 2019, it was 29 plus points. In 2021, when he was the starter again in New Orleans, it was 28 points. This is a player who, regardless of the situation, and we saw how bad the New Orleans offense, like their wide receiver court was an absolute mess. We saw Taysom Hill take over at quarterback, and it was not better because they just didn't have the talent on the team. Now insert Chris Olave. Now insert Jarvis Landry. Michael Thomas is working on his recovery. Jameis Winston last season was still able to put up gaudy upside numbers he did tear his acl but he looks like he's gonna be ready for week one and he's not a super mobile quarterback he doesn't need to be he has weapons with kamara and Taysom hill is now going to be at tight end along with adam troutman so i think that Jameis winston being at 15 is a player that we need to be considering much more seriously. So I'm on the James Winston hype train. He is an early quarterback two for me, and I love getting him as a possible quarterback three if he falls any. Quarterback 16 for me is Matt Ryan. He Matt Ryan is going as quarterback 20 on underdog, and he's going as quarterback 22 right now on drafters behind Jameis Winston in both instances, and I that's how I have it. However, Matt Ryan, <laughs> the reason why he stunk last year was because he lost Calvin Ridley, and he was depending upon Cordero Patterson, a 31-year-old running back, to be his main source of fantasy goodness. And there's only so much ceiling you can access when your wide receiver one is also your running back one. So with Calvin Ridley out in the second half of the season and Russell Gage missed a few games at the beginning of the season, Matt Ryan now has the prime opportunity to bounce back. They have The Indianapolis Colts have Michael Pittman, who's been one of the biggest risers in ADP over the last month. Alec Pierce is a second-round draft capital pick a few months ago. And they also have Mo Ali Cox. They've got Jonathan Taylor to control. And also Naheem Hines. If Naheem Hines can get some of the pass catching work, like how Devonta Freeman got pass catching work in Atlanta, look out. 
this team could be pretty dangerous. Matt Ryan is a very interesting mid quarterback too. I think he's a nice floor play, but I would have felt better if Matt Ryan had a better number two wide receiver, either to compliment or play behind Michael Pittman in 2022. I'm not sure if Alec Pierce can do that right away. Now, as you might have noticed, I've dropped Derek Carr. He's my quarterback 17. He's quarterback 14 on underdog, and he's quarterback 13 on drafters fantasy. I'm fading Derek Carr. And man, oh man, y'all are not going to like it. But Derek Carr, his fantasy points, his 84th percentile outcome fantasy points over the last three seasons has topped out at 25. Topped out at 25. Now, the counter argument to fading Derek Carr is that he's brought in Devontae Adams. And that's true. Devontae Adams does move the needle. But we saw last year Henry Ruggs was getting significant run. He was showing some upside. In fact, Henry Ruggs was doing pretty well to start the season. And then all of that Ruggs situation got... um, kind of derailed the wide receiver core for the Vegas Raiders. But Derek Carr now has Darren Waller, Devonte Adams, and Hunter Renfro. Waller and Renfro, though, are not like explosive players. They are consistent, high catch percentage type of players. Waller can make the occasional deep catch or contested catch, but insert Devonte Adams instead of Zay Jones, and you will see a little bit of a ceiling uptick. But I think it's going to be hard for Derek Carr to access the type of ceiling that Aaron Rodgers showed over the last three seasons. Rodgers was consistently 27, 28, 29, almost 30 fantasy points. This is 84th percentile outcome, whereas Derek Carr over the last three seasons consistently 20. 21, 22, and 25 fantasy points. So I'm as 84th percentile outcome. What does that mean? He's he's been pretty much a mediocre quarterback too for you. Insert a top wide receiver, he becomes now maybe a mid quarterback too. And so 17 is an appropriate value, I believe, for Derek Carr. The Devontae Adams hype is too much. We've, in fact, seen over the last month both Derek Carr's and Devontae Adams' ADPs decrease significantly relative to the round they were drafted in May. So fading Derek Carr is, I think, the right spot for right now. Justin Fields, for me, is at 18. Fields is 16 on underdog, but he is 18 on drafters. And I was more in on Justin Fields pre-draft. I've mentioned this on a few podcasts before, but the Chicago Bears did him no favors in the passing game by drafting Velas Jones and signing Byron Pringle. Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet are going to get theirs. They're both, Komet's going to easily command over 100 targets, and Darnell Mooney's going to get close to 150 targets, I think. Eight Eight to 10 easily per week. But Justin Fields, he did get a a coach upgrade, but I'm concerned the pass catchers will limit his passing ceiling. He's going to have a nice floor, but in these best ball tournaments, you don't want the floor. You want spike weeks. And I don't think that Justin Fields is surrounded by the weapons that he needs to have the spike weeks necessary for you to be winning right now. I would have been way more comfortable with Justin Fields, if the Bears would have gone out and gotten a a Garrett Wilson or a Chris Olave, okay? But they didn't. They settled for an older Velas Jones. At 19, I have Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is going as quarterback 21 on drafters behind Matt Ryan and Jameis Winston, but Daniel Jones is going as quarterback 20 on drafters so i think i have him appropriately priced i'm a little bit higher 
on Daniel Jones. He's got so many weapons. We anticipate a healthier Saquon Barkley. And Daniel Jones can run. He can access ceilings. We've seen some ceilings from Daniel Jones, whereas we've also seen some floors because the play calling from Jason Garrett was disastrous over the last couple seasons. Nevertheless, I like Daniel Jones there. He's a, a rotating back end quarterback too for me. Trevor Lawrence at 20, and he's Trevor Lawrence is going as quarterback 18 on underdog. Trevor Lawrence is going as quarterback 19 on drafters. It's a hard. It's going to be hard for Trevor Lawrence to access ceilings as well. As I mentioned, he's mobile. He's got the rapport with Travis Etienne, his running back. We've seen Jacksonville throw to the tight end, and there are some pretty good tight ends in Jacksonville with Evan Ingram and Dan Arnold. Like They're useful tight ends. I'm not saying that they're like top 10 tight ends, but one of them may step up and get volume that might be an eyebrow raise. But looking at the wide receiver core, Zay Jones, not inspiring. Christian Kirk, he'll probably be the wide receiver one, but the Cardinals were so confident in a Christian Kirk breakout that they traded for DeAndre Hopkins. But the Jacksonville is paying Christian Kirk a lot of money. We anticipate that he'll lead the team in targets. But also, LaVisca Chenault is an interesting player that I don't want to forget about. Chenault right now is being forgotten because he's being drafted wide receiver 90, ADP 205 on, on underdogs. Just throwing that out there that... He, Maybe if Doug Peterson can use LaVisca Chenault better, then we can see Trevor Lawrence have a wide receiver who can access upside. I don't think Zay Jones and I don't think Christian Kirk are the answers to that question. Which wide receiver can elevate or be elevated by Trevor Lawrence? 21 for me, Tua Tonga Viola. Tua is not 21 on underdog. He is quarterback 17 on underdog, and he's quarterback 16 on drafters. I'm lower on as a player, but if he rises up, it's going to be because of Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill. I think there's going to be a higher floor for Tua than what uh, he's shown in the past. So, like, over the last two seasons, in 2020... His 84th percentile outcome was about 22 fantasy points. In 2021, it actually got worse. His 84th percentile outcome was 20 points. Enter a new coach with a new system, new wide receiver 1A or 1B. However, you want to view Tyreek Hill as it's very possible that Jalen Waddell either gets more targets or a higher target share. So I think that Tua's ceiling will increase. He's not going to be in that 20 to 22 point range like he was the last two seasons. But I don't think he, I don't think his 84th percentile outcome gets him up to that 30 range, like the Matthew Staffords of the world or the Dak Prescott's of the world or the Tom Brady's of the world. I just don't think he can access those type of ceilings, which is why I'm worried about him as an upside play in best ball. The only way I'm taking Tua in best ball leagues is if I have Waddle or Hill and I want that stack. He also has a tough week 17 matchup against the New England Patriots in Foxborough. That may be pretty difficult, although to be fair, that maybe you do rotate that matchup in as a contrarian play. Nevertheless, Tua for me is quarterback 21. Quarterback 22 is Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Goff is quarterback 26 on on underdog. He's quarterback 25 on drafters. I am higher than consensus on Jared Goff. I believe that Amon Ross St. Brown is still going to crush. We, I think that DJ Chark is an improvement over the other high A dot players that the Lions were trying to rotate in last season. Quintez Cephas is a, an interesting piece. And of course, a late season Jamison Williams, first round draft pick here in 2022. He may make a significant impact come the end of the season i want the detroit lions as a sneaky stack like tj hawkinson i think is uh 
has shown some upside that we're not recognizing. I also love DeAndre Swift. So Jared Goff here, he's not there because of his skills or his talents necessarily, but it's because he's surrounded by a lot of very useful players in Detroit. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen with the Lions. 23, and I'll round out with my 24th here in a moment. But in 23, Carson Wentz is my 23rd. And Wentz is quarterback 27 on both underdog and drafters. So Carson Wentz, I think he was more um, on a more conservative offense last year. We've seen Taylor Heineke be a little reckless for the Washington Commanders over the last couple seasons when he's gotten spot starts. And I think Carson Wentz is more tempered, but also I think it speaks to the Washington team allowing their quarterback to have a little bit more flexibility. Like Ron Rivera is let Cam Newton run wild. Okay, so there's a little bit more freedom for Carson Wentz to make plays happen on his own, whether it's rushing the ball uh, or whether it's buying time to get the ball to the likes of Terry McLaurin or Curtis Samuel, who's making his way back. Logan Thomas may not be ready for the start of the season, but Jahan Dotson, first round draft capital wide receiver should be making a pretty significant impact to start the season as well. So Carson Wentz, I think, is a very interesting pick here, and I think he's undervalued. The Washington football team has gotten some not so much love this offseason, and I think Wentz at 23 has shown upside in the past, and he's got some good pass catchers. All right, last the last quarterback that I'm going to throw in here, I'm actually making an in-game call to change it up. Davis Mills is my 24th quarterback. And Davis Mills is quarterback 28 on underdog. And Davis Mills is 28th as well on drafters. I want in on Davis Mills. As mentioned before, Davis Mills, when when he was quarterback, Brandon Cooks was a wide receiver one for you. And I love getting that Mills-Cooks connection. And he's super cheap. And you have to think that the Houston Texans are going to be in some pretty negative game scripts, forcing Mills to throw the ball more, increasing the volume and getting yards. And uh, and we saw Mills improve last year. He may be playing for his job for 2023, but I like getting Davis Mills. and I want to be higher than consensus on Mills to make sure that if he's one of those later quarterback twos or early quarterback threes that I'm rotating. That'll do it for today's podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I just recapped my top 24 quarterbacks, and I've posted these on Fantasy Pros rankings. So you can go to Fantasy Pros and look up the extra rankings for best ball, and you'll find me, Bradley Stalder. You can follow me on Twitter at FF Stalder. Later on this uh, next week, I'm going to be bringing on some guests and we're going to be talking about rankings. Those guests are still being lined up, but I'm really excited to get that and a few other things that are in the works out to you. So definitely check it out. I'm excited to do talk about rankings and get some more drafts in. We'll do some drafters, DraftKings, FWC, of course, and I'll do some more Best Ball Mania 3 recaps over the next coming weeks. And yeah, I've got a lot of exciting projects that I'm working on that I'll be bringing out to you over the course of the summer. And I also want to take a moment here at the end of the podcast to shout out Scott Fish and the Scott Fish Bowl. I was just invited for the invited back for the second year. So Scott Fish Bowl 12 will kick off in July. And if you don't know about the Scott Fish Bowl, there's a lot of awesome people you can follow. In particular, follow Scott Fish on Twitter at Scott Fish 24. And there's a lot of details going into it. Ultimately, it's about bringing on a community and building a community of, of charity to each other and charity to our community, hashtag fantasy cares. And I know that there are some special initiatives that Scott Fish and others in the community have taken on, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be donating this year to Arbor Woman and they work with the crisis pregnancies 
and gives resources to women. They provide free ultrasounds. They provide free counseling. They also provide a lot of resources after a woman gives birth and gives support if she's in a domestic abuse situation. They really care about like the entire process of a woman's experience in pregnancy, both bef even before she gets pregnant and then even in crisis pregnancies. And they are really discreet about working with clients and uh, and making sure that their rights are respected and treating them with the utmost dignity. Because in those situations, women feel very vulnerable. And this is it's a new experience. And maybe for many of them that are not sure where to turn or what to do. And the people at Arbor Woman, especially here and just outside of or inside of Ann Arbor, Michigan, I would encourage you as well, find your local charity or donate to some of the Fantasy Cares charities that are listed. You can find them on Twitter. Yeah, definitely check them out. But this year I'll be donating to Arbor Woman to support my local community. Check them out. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And until next time, good luck in the best ball streets.